coordination. The basic idea is simple. If you have some kind of a channel and if you allow a very hot gas to flow through, uh, had hot gas in the sense of a plasma, that means the bulk of the gas is ionized, the electrons have been stripped off. So, you have essentially electrons and ions flowing and if you have a magnetic field in the direction perpendicular to the sheet of paper, that means we normally denote it like this, that means <coughs> it is like, like an arrow going into the paper. Then uh, the electrons will be deflected by this magnetic field, the holes, hole, not holes, the ions will also be deflected by the ma magnetic field in opposite direction. So that if you put electrodes in the two sides, then some voltage will be induced in its two electrodes. And if you connect it through some external circuit, through some external circuit, a current will flow. So, this is the essential idea of the magneto hydrodynamic power generation. That means, here because of the magnetic field, there is a charge separation and that charge separation is collected by electrodes and that is what allows the current to flow to an external circuit. Now, you might ask how to actually do it, what creates this plasma? So, the, the essential idea of the magneto hydrodynamic power generation is where you have a fuel which is either a liquid fuel or a gaseous fuel that will be burnt creating a very high temperature and that high temperature gas will be right in the beginning uh, uh, allowed to flow through this kind of a channel. It is like a nozzle that means it, it passes at a high speed thus extracting a power that is contained in that in that uh, gas. And the, then our, our after the, the power is generated a part of the energy is extracted, uh, the rest of the energy still contains a lot of energy that goes through and that is then further extracted by a conventional thermal power plant. That means, this MHD cycle becomes uh, MHD cycle in conjunction with the conventional uh, steam based thermal power plant becomes what is known as a combined cycle power plant, where the MHD is the topping cycle and the Rankine cycle is the bottom. Is that clear? Topping in the sense that when it is high temperature, that is when the topping part of the energy is extracted and when it goes out of this at a relatively lower temperature, that is when the bottoming part is effective. Now, there is some uh, something more to it. Firstly, how much can we raise the temperature simply by burning a gas? That means, these, these kind of uh, systems are considered where there is the availability of natural gas. As you know in India, there are places where natural gas based power plants are coming up and those places the MHD cycle will be very effective. Uh, it is also considered to, to use coal in the sense that we have already learned that coal can also be converted into a gas, gasification of coal and then the coal can be burnt. So, if you are considering that kind of a cycle, then coal can also be used as a fuel, but essentially you have to have some kind of a clean gaseous fuel as a fuel. But still the temperature that is that is attained here is not sufficient to, to ionize most of the gas. So, there has to be something additional put in and in order to increase the level of ionization, either cesium or potassium is uh, injected. That means, a bit of cesium and potassium is injected into the, into the gas that is called seeding and that cesium or potassium and potassium whatever it is, uh, that 
uh, immediately gets ionized and that adds to the overall level of ionization of the material. That means the free electrons that are that are free to move in this plasma is principally contributed by the heat. Okay. So, even if the temperature is not all that high, if it is sufficient to ionize the heat, that is sufficient. So, either cesium or potassium is added as a seed. What would actually contribute to the bulk of the, uh, the current? As you can see, there would be the electrons and there would be the ions. Ions would be for example, the cesium ion or the potassium ion that will contain a its mass, each of this ion's mass will be far exceeding the mass of an electron, right? Many times, another 25,000 times. As a result, the bulk of the transport, they are in equal number. The, the, the number of uh, electrons, assuming that one is stripped off from one uh, atom, would be in equal numbers, or other words. Uh, in some cases, electrons will be larger in number, provided larger number is stripped off from each uh, ion. So, we are considering the actual bending of the path and then finally reaching that electrode, right? And the bending of the path will obviously depend on uh, the, the mass of that uh, the ion or the electron taking part in the activity. If it is heavy, then it will have a larger probability of just going through. If it is light, it will bend and take part in the activity. So, then that this leads us to conclude that bulk of that current that is generated is due to electrons, though theoretically both could take part. Hmm? The, the ultimately the activity that happens here is due to electrons. So, let us consider the motion of electrons in a bit more detail. Have you understood the essential structure? The structure of the MSB generator would be something like this, that you will have a chamber in which you will have the injection of air and injection of fuel. So, this is the combustion chamber. From the chamber, it will be sort of going out like a nozzle. Hmm? and the electrodes will be in the two sides of the nozzle and the magnetic field will be perpendicular to it. And when it goes out of the nozzle, then it is that the only in this part the energy is generated and after that it goes to a normal, uh, what is this? This is the normal boiler, where in the normal way, you will have, you already learned that there will be a boiler drum, there will be the uh, water walls like this, there will be water walls like this and finally, there will be, uh, this will go out, there will be the superheater section, the economizer section and all that. So, it is just before that takes place, a part of the energy is extracted at a higher efficiency through this MHB process, okay. And at this point, there will be the seed injection. So, if you have understood this part, then let us go into what actually happens inside this, what happens to each of the electrons. Now, consider one electron, say here, and this fellow is moving in this direction, hmm? and you have a magnetic field that is going into the board like this. What will be the motion of the electron like this? Hmm? That is obtained from the left hand rule. So, apply the left hand rule and tell me what will be the force felt by this electron. Hmm? Downward. So, it will feel a force downward and as a result, it is motion will be deflected from away from this linear path to a path like this. So, it will move like this and say it has come here. 
at this point when it is come here then the motion is no longer like that the motion is now like this and what will be the direction of the force again towards the center so it will be like this it will further move like this so do you see ultimately what will its uh, behavior be like it will be circular hmm. so it will be a circular motion like this if 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 nothing happens to it that means it's not colliding with anything or something like that then it will be a circular motion and logically speaking it will go on moving in the circle <coughs> but no that cannot happen because uh, <coughs> we had assumed that there is a there is a well this fellow has a velocity in direction perpendicular to the magnetic field but there is no reason to assume that there could be a, a component in the direction of the magnetic field which will be completely unaffected by uh, the magnetic field so what will happen to that then you have uh, then you will have there is the magnetic field and here is the electron if there is no component in that direction it will move like this but if there is a component which will be unaffected so it will move like a helical path it will move in a helical path so far so good uh, it will move like ok just consider it, it, it will move in a helical path uh, ok let me draw so here is the magnetic field hmm. so if uh, component of the left velocity direction of B is present hmm. then it will be like this well there need not be only the magnetic field there could also be electric field hmm. because as you can see there will be a pair of electrodes and the pair of electrodes being in two different voltages means each of these electrons will feed say say electric field also. So what will be the motion like if there is an electric field also it will drift in the direction of the electric field. So while supposing I am not considering this that means I am not presently considering the component in the direction of B but just this and the electric field in that case it will move like like what it would have been a circle if there is no electric field if it is circle, there will be a drift so it will be it is not really helical motion remember huh? but it will move like this so there is a drift so this is this was the direction of B earlier and in the presence of both it will be a a combination of all these motions. Hmm. So first we considered what if there is only B and the mode the, the component of the velocity is only in the direction orthogonal to B. Second we considered if there is a component of the velocity in the direction of B what will be the motion and third we considered what will happen if there is an additional electric field. So it will be like this but not really because there will be a large number of electrons and ions in that gas. So you cannot really say that an electron will go just, just like that because it will collide, hmm. it will automatically collide. So ultimately the, the electron will traverse a path that will uh, go through uh, various collisions. Hmm. But before we go into that let us just, just figure out what will be the, the radius of this you can easily figure that out from Newton's law. Hmm. So let us write that the acceleration will be will be V perpendicular square by R. I hmm. am denoting that perpendicular because it is it is related to the perpendicular direction of that then uh, Newton's law will say that the force 
is mass into acceleration. So, m v perpendicular square by r mass into acceleration is a force and what will be the force? Force will be electronic charge times v perpendicular times v provided I am considering only one electron, but if you write it in a general sense that means something that is applicable both to electrons as well as the ions, then you will have to multiply with the number z representing how many of the electronic charge is there in that ion. Okay. So, z is a how many of the electrons charge is there in that ion. So, in general it will be this expression. Okay. Uh, so, V cancels off and you get, uh, so this gives you V by R which is nothing but the omega as, as V Z So, that is the omega, fine. So, that is the radius, the, the angular uh, velocity of the motion. But now, as I told you <coughs> that it will actually cover parts like this and then another collision, another collision, another collision and so on and so forth, right. It will go through many collisions either this type or you might say that if, if the uh, angular frequency is much uh, higher then it will be okay, collision like that. There are two possibilities. What is the difference between these two poss possibilities? Here uh, the mean free path was smaller and here the mean free path was larger in comparison, comparison to what? Uh, uh, in comparison to what? Suppose your uh, the mean free path is lambda and the mean time is tau. Hmm. Then you can say that lambda by tau is Now, we know that uh, V is omega times R, the radius. Hmm. So, we have, uh, if you substitute, we have omega tau is equal to Now, you know, notice that this this term omega tau is what uh, actually makes the distinction between these, this type and that type. If omega tau is large, that means this is large, this is the mean free path is larger than the radius, far larger than the radius, then it will be this type. If it is small, then uh, it will be this type. Okay. So, the omega tau is the quantity that we normally use in order to distinguish between the types of the average, these are all average, 
you must need you will not be able to say that each one will traverse path like that but on an average if omega tau is small then the mean free path is small then it will be like this sorry it, the, the, in that case it will be like that huh? so this will be where omega tau is less than less than 1 and this will be where omega tau is greater than less than 1 okay so these are the two possibilities now what will actually be the result of all this consider this you have consider again again one electron and the magnetic field and this fellow as you understood would be moving like this and suppose it has come here remember we had initially considered that this will be the direction of flow so the electron will be flowing like this and you have produced a a b due to which there will be a voltage generated here that means the electrons will be actually moving like this that is producing what is the what is known as the faraday effect so let us quantify this faraday effect it has come here so it was actually moving like this in this time it would have gone here but instead it has come here right so it has moved by an extent this uh, in the y direction so there would have been otherwise if this is not there no uh, motion in this direction now it has the, the it has a motion y that is a faraday effect right but notice that there is something in addition to that that is it would have traveled up to this point in the absence of the magnetic field but now it has traveled up to this in the x direction okay so here is something that is representing what the the bulk of the gas is moving with the with, with the velocity v say what does this represent it will represent the fact that the electrons are falling back electrons are failing to travel with the same velocity in the x direction right if electrons are falling back from that direction what will be what will its effective result is that the system will see a voltage in the x direction okay if the electrons are traveling along with the rest of the uh, uh, mass there will be no voltage but if they are falling back yes there will be voltage there will be current which you normally did not anticipate from the from the idea of the faraday motion you would not anticipate that there will also be a voltage in the x direction but there will be if you allow current to flow there will be a current in the x direction also so that is called the hall effect and that voltage is the hall voltage the current is the hall current hmm? so that is the hall effect how much will that be so you had this this part and it is i'll i'll draw it correctly mm. The center would be somewhere here. Yeah. Hmm. So, if it travels up to this point before the next collision, then it has traveled by this extent. And what is this related to? That is related to the omega tau. Okay. So that is related to the omega tau. Fine. So the Hall effect, the amount of Hall effect, will be large if the omega tau is large for example if the next collision happens here obviously it has not fallen back much from the rest of the gas <coughs> but it has, it has been allowed to travel up to this it has fallen back much from the rest of the gas so the extent of hall effect will depend on the mean free path the mean time between the the, the collisions effectively on this omega tau fine so it depends on omega tau which is expressed in the unit of radians so you have omega tau quantifying the hall effect hmm. so let us write down omega tau okay 
So now, uh, for example, if the omega tau is something like 0 0.1, you uh, anticipate it to move on an average only up to this extent. If it is of the order of say 1, omega tau is equal to 1, then you would on an average anticipate it to go up to this extent. If it is say 5, you would al allow it to traverse almost the full cycle before the next collision like that and as a result there will be the Hall effect. So now on this basis let us try to understand the, the actual working. So you see initially the kind of picture that we had of the functioning of the, the MHD generator, now it is somewhat changing right. There is some more complication due to very uh, fundamental physical effects. So we need to understand and we need to do something about that. Uh, how much will be the voltage induced? The voltage induced will be the or uh, that will produce the current. So the there will be two currents, this Faraday current Faraday current will be is the conductivity terms times okay so that will be the uh, the current so the motion of these electrons or the ions will depend on suppose you have got you have applied a field E there are two electrodes and you have applied a field E and there is an electron or an ion here how much will it move that will depend on its mobility obviously the mobility of the electrons is far larger than that of the ions but nevertheless it will depend on mobility. So that mobility is represented by mu so you say that this V is equal to the mobility times e the the uh, electric field induced but for the electrons it will have a negative sign because the electrons move in the direction opposite to the uh, electric field okay now if this is the uh, the velocity then the current will be j as a vector will be uh, if each of the electrons have this velocity, then what will be the j? What will be the, the current induced? The current will be uh, how many electrons are flowing? N. How many of the charged particles are flowing? And each charged particle has a charge of Z e. For the electron Z is 1, but for the ions it will be something else. Times the mobility times Oh, sorry, times the V or times the mobility times E. Okay. So N Z E V and V is this, so it will be this. Huh? <coughs> now let me let me write it uh, clearly. Is equal to N Z E V in the negative direction because the, the for the electrons flow, it is the current is opposite is equal to n z e mu now this has the appearance of the ohm's law here is the voltage here is the current and here is then the effective resistance hmm. so effective resistance uh, will express it in terms of the conductivity then uh, sigma sigma 0 will be the our notation for the conductivity on that condition that will be uh, n z e mu okay so that will be the conductivity effectively that will be the conductivity of the of the flow of charge and we will write j is equal to fine so that uh, uh, defines how much will be the, the motion. Now you see, let us consider both of them. 
here there is a magnetic field, here there is an electron, this fellow is moving, but uh, now we are considering not only the motion, now we are considering the, the, we are trying to consider the voltage induced and the current, which are palpably uh, evident quantities. <coughs> so, the V cross B will give you uh, the electric field that is produced by, because of this, fine. And in addition to that, there will be an existing electric field. So, the effective electric field would be the combination of these two, right. So, we will say that E f is equal to the electric field existing plus V So, the electron's drift velocity will be V uh, is equal to minus mu, I am not talking about electron, so let us put the suffix E times this. So, you see V appears in both the sides. Is that clear? So, effectively the, the electric field experienced by this fellow is this much and due to that there will be, the, because this is the mobility, this will be the velocity. So, the velocity appears in the both the sides, we need to <coughs> separate them out to, to obtain the, the actual effect. So, we will consider this later, but let us now uh, figure out these are the vectors and the vectors will be somewhat difficult for us to handle. So, what we will do is, we will break them out, out, out into three components, x component, y component, z component and try to find out this in all the different components. And in order to do that, uh, we will draw x x y z and B will be in the direction of Z, right, into the into the paper. X is the direction in which the, the gas is flowing and Y is the direction perpendicular to it. Hmm. So, there will be a component of the motion in the X direction and that when coupled with B, V cross B, so there is a component in the X direction V X, cross B will be in which direction? Up. So, the V X cross B will be in this direction. Similarly, there will be a component of the velocity in the V Y direction and that when coupled with B will be giving you a the minus x direction, clear. Hmm. So, this is V y cross B. So, now we can <coughs> on the basis of this we can write down uh, the equations in each of the coordinates. Let us see, let us uh, clearly draw the, the vector diagram. So, here you have x, y, z and you have b in that direction. Uh, e, x is in this direction, v, x is in this direction, e, y, the voltage in the y direction here and v, y is in this direction. And here, whatever it is, I, I don't really care because that doesn't interact with the B. These are the two things that are of our interest. And we have just concluded that V x cross B will be in this direction. 
and v y cross d will be the dissipation. <coughs> Fine. <coughs> Based on that, we can write the v x is equal to the way we have just written mu e times e x minus v y okay v i times v because now we are not writing vectors we are writing just the product of the two uh, quantities v y is minus mu e v y will be e y plus v x d okay and v z is simply as i told you we did need not consider this these are the two things of our interest and uh, meaning now notice very importantly that v x appears here and here v y appears here and here so you could solve these two equations to obtain them individually clear so do that can do that do it uh, to cut a long story short let me give you the result you you will have v x is equal to minus mu by 1 plus beta square e x plus beta e y and v y is equal to minus mu by 1 plus beta square e y minus beta e x. is beta is b mu huh? so uh, b okay let me write them in general way v z is minus mu e z where uh, beta is This is equal to one of the top. Huh? So this is an important quantity, as I told you, quantifying the Hall effect. That's why we have put it in terms of the beta. Now, if you know the velocities, you also know the currents. Huh? So we can write the currents as j x is equal to j is the current density in the x direction. It will be sigma by 1 plus beta square notice the the expression uh, so we are writing in, in terms of this huh? beta square e x plus beta e y and here it is j y is sigma naught by 1 plus beta square e y minus beta e x and j z is equal to minus mu e z simply. So, we have noticed the that this is the, the thing like the Ohm's law. This is how the current vector is related to the voltage vector. But you see that these are somewhat involved and complicated huh? because the current in the x direction depends on the voltage in both the direction, current in the y direction depends on voltage in both the direction and z direction is independent. So, what is the what is the meaning on the effect of all this? Let us try to figure that out. Now, it is it is not difficult to see that supposing the the electrodes are phased, placed such that there is no voltage in the x direction, E x is 0. Hmm. 
as you have seen already here is a channel and here is a B electrode. That means there is no voltage in the x direction because the electrodes will short it. If E x is 0 then what will be the J x? It will be this times beta E y and how much will it J, J y? J y will remain. It will be this is 0 this okay which means that even if there is no voltage in the x direction there will be current in the x direction okay so the you can now draw sort of a vector diagram the e will be in this direction here there will be a component there will be current in this direction there will be also a current in this direction so the current resultant will be like this here will be j here will be e they will be moved from each other hmm. oh this is a that way probably it will be the other side because of the uh, okay we will see that see to that but the point is that the voltage and the current will not be in the same direction okay is that point understood effectively all this rotation of these things and things like that we are trying to get that extracted in terms of the voltages and the currents and we have come to the conclusion that the voltage and the current will not be vectorially in the same direction they will be in different direction okay now <coughs> now let us consider what is happening inside this fellow you have uh, the plasma flowing with some velocity and you have got some kind of a uh, electrode structure there can be different types of electrodes that is why I am not drawing it right now but what happens is that as it flows and as you extract the power uh, effectively what you do you slow it down you extract some power, power out of it means that you make it lose kinetic energy so it loses you have some amount of here some amount some other amount there and uh, it is something like in case of any motor any generator suppose there is a generator the kind of generator that you heard of like the DC generator like the uh, induction generator those things that you heard of imagine that as you uh, run it in no load that is you have not put in load there will be some voltage induced and as you load it that voltage will drop because there will be uh, uh, when in no load the generator voltage is equal to the back EMF that that maintains the balance when you load it the back EMF is there but there is also a, a load so due to which there will be a new balance so always there is a generated voltage and there is a back EMF okay now here also there will be something like that here also there will be say a, a, say a similar thing so uh, you will con will consider the E X E Y and E Z as the back EMF component. Hmm. The generated voltage is U times B. U is the motion times B. So, uh, the generated voltage is UB, these are the back EMS, so the resultant will be E will denote it as SX, ESY, ESZ is the resultant. So, we can write the equations as EX in the x direction is equal to minus E S X because there is no uh, induced voltage in the e direction uh, in the x direction E Y is equal to U B U is the velocity of the plasma times the magnetic field this is the voltage induced minus E S y and E z is equal to 
minus E F Z. So, these are the back EMFs which are expressed in terms of the generated voltage minus the, uh, the resultant voltage that we actually see that is E F Y. Hmm. So, all these voltages will be related like this. And uh, the loading factor K is the open circuit voltage, uh, oh, the closed circuit voltage by open circuit voltage. Okay. So, if you have uh, there are electrodes here, you have not loaded it, whatever voltage induced is the denominator. If you load it, then whatever voltage induced is the numerator, that is the definition of the loading factor K. Because you could uh, put in different types of loads and you will soon find that for here also, like in the photovoltaic cell, like in the wind generator, you will always find that for a specific load, it gives the maximum power. Hmm. So, we need to find that, that is why this is important loading factor K. So, if you if you have seen all this, then you would realize uh, these are the equations that we will be using. So, just keep them very uh, clearly in your mind. So, out of all this we have concluded that if you have the channel like this, and if you have the electrodes like that and if the volt the plasma is flowing with a velocity u and you have this you might connect a resistance to the external circuit which will lead to the voltage being changed to the s quantity resultant quantity hmm. now if it is like this this is called the continuous electrode Faraday generator, because these electrodes are continuous through the channel there is one electrode up and one electrode down. Now, the electric field is in this direction, but the current flows in this direction. As we have seen already, the current is not in the direction of the electric field, as a result of which the effective power goes down. By how much? By uh, the, the, the current, the transverse current, the, um, the, the power is due to this voltage and this current but the actual current is that direction. So, its component in this direction will be less by a factor uh, 1 by 1 plus beta square. Hmm. We have already seen that. See 1 plus beta square here. So, this will make the effective power somewhat less. It would have been good if the current also were in this, this same direction, but the current is actually in this direction. That is why there will be a uh, a reduction in the in the power. In this case, the boundary conditions are boundary conditions are E x is zero. There is no voltage allowed in the x direction because you have continuous electrodes. E x is equal to zero. E z is also equal to zero. And in the z direction, we have not it no electrode, and therefore there is no current that can flow. Uh, J z is zero. But there is current that can flow in the x direction. Can you see through the electrode? Huh? There is current that can flow in the x direction. So that is not zero. Current will flow in this direction. That is not zero. So these are the boundary conditions. If you put that in this these equations, what do you get? Uh, okay. First, let us see. In this case, the 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 K, the loading factor is. E S Y, the resultant voltage in that y direction divided by the generated voltage which is U B. Okay. Hmm. Uh, 
so this is the generated voltage uh, and this is the this is the generated voltage and this is the resultant voltage after the loading and that is that gives you the factor loading factor q it is not difficult to see that if you multiply this with uh, j y and this with j y what does the numerator say the actual power that is delivered to the load what does the what, what does the numerator say actual power that is delivered to the load what does the denominator say that power u b is the is the voltage generated j y is the current flowing through that so that is the sort of uh, that will be related to the breaking that is produced in the in the, in the gas huh? so this is also effectively the the uh, efficiency that you have in the system so if you have that then you can write e s y is equal to k q b and e y we already know as uh, here here k u b you substitute you get u b 1 minus k ok so now in that terms we can write j x is equal to sigma naught divided by 1 plus beta square u b k minus 1 uh, beta and j y is sigma naught 1 plus beta square u b 1 minus k here there was a negative sign that is why it becomes k minus 1. So the power generated power generated by unit volume will be E S Y is a voltage times J Y. So if you substitute that you will get this will become uh, sigma naught divided by 1 plus beta square u b 1 minus k times k u b ok. So that is what you uh, got we can write that as p is equal to sigma naught 1 plus beta square u square b square k 1 minus k. Interesting thing is that we would like to maximize the power. So in order to obtain the maximization of power we will write dp dk is equal to 0. Let us do that. This fellow is constant only k 1 minus k. So you get no only, only, only this much will have to be differentiated with respect to k yes k is equal to half so it will be k minus k square so 1 minus twice k is equal to 0 or k is equal to which means that the power maximizes for k is equal to 0 0.5 hmm. so you have the arrangement like this and there will be an external load that external load has to be variable and it has to be so set that k becomes 0 0.5 k depends on the external load and this can be done by a power electronic controller in between uh, today let us stop we will continue with that in the next class Thank you.